Hello, and welcome to One Voice Live, where we talk about one voice, what it is, and how it fits into the world of singing. I am your host, Alex Zito, and I'm joined today by creator of One Voice, Michael Maresca. Michael, how are you? Uh, I'm doing great, Alex. It's great to, great to be on the show today. Thank you uh, so much for joining us. Uh, today, we are continuing our series called Changing Our Vocal Perspective, which is where we talk about how one voice is changing what we think we know to be true about singing. Uh, today, our topic is talent. So, Michael, will you start us off first by defining talent, what we're talking about, and then talking a bit about how that fits into the singing world before one voice? So, talent. Talent. such an interesting idea. Talent's been around forever. We've been talking about talent for, you know, hundreds of years and in everything when we look at someone we look at them when we say wow you're so talented uh you know i'm sure for for many of you uh watching this right now people have said either to you or you have said to someone else wow you are so talented and i think the interesting thing about talent or the idea of talent is that talent to me um offers this idea of an innate ability this kind of innate skill set that you received at birth and have had since birth. Uh, and so that's the idea of talent uh, for me, is how I think most people tend to utilize it. In most cases, what happens with the word talent is it becomes an excuse for people not to actually do the work to get better at something because they're not talented um, and they weren't born with talent. And so because they, they weren't born with talent, they now uh, don't have to put in the work to actually achieve what they could achieve with their voices, their minds, their bodies. Um, what does that look like? I guess before one voice, I think for most of the world of singing, singing is really just magic. You know, um, either you were born a tenor or you weren't. Either you're were born a bass or you weren't. And one voice comes along. And for those of you who haven't watched One Voice Live number one and number two, now uh, we talk about voice labels and types. And I think one of the interesting things about that is before this, you were just one of those things, and you were either you were either born lucky to sing high notes or you weren't. And, you know, let's be honest, most of us want to sing high notes. Most of us. There's very few of you out there who really want to get better at singing low notes, although I think that is equally as important and as valid. But I think for most of us, we were just born unlucky to sing higher, as it were. And what One Voice offers is this idea through the coordination theory that we can actually sing higher or lower for that, for that fact. And I think that by itself... Um, for me, knocked on the door of that famous old word, talent, mm -hmm. and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. So can I sing higher and can I sing lower than I was born with uh, or than what I arrived in the world with by the time I was 13? That's what I mean by arrived in the world. What the coordination theory as well as the weight theory offered us is the idea that uh, we actually could do more than we thought was possible, which is so exciting that we could do more because um, it means all the things that we ever wanted to do are now suddenly possible. The only question becomes, are we willing to do the work? Are we willing to do the work? Yes, there is potential for everyone to sing. Yes, uh, there is potential. We do believe that here in the world of one voice, that everyone has the potential to sing, aside from people who lack the physical mechanics to do so. But you have that potential. Now, just because everyone, every predominantly sex female and every predominantly sex male, as it were, um, uh, has the same coordination changes, has the same vocal potential, doesn't necessarily mean that they will take advantage of it. Remember, there's work involved in getting there. Can you talk a bit about why talent gets assigned to artists and not accountants? <laughs> like when someone's great at math, we're not like, you're so talented. It's just like, wow, you're good at math. So why yeah. is it when you can sing or act or dance, you're talented? That's such a great question. I think it comes down to the, the idea that that singing is a gift, um, that it is a special thing that the, uh, you know, you were lucky enough, Alex, that the unicorn from heaven flew down and graced you with the ability to sing. And I think what's interesting about that is as soon as we think that way, as soon as we start looking at something that way, there's no longer any need to seek progress to mm -hmm. seek betterment of self because you, you, you will only be as good as what you were born with. And as far as singing goes, it's, it's just not true through, through the coordination theory and the weight theory. And now, not just through those theories, but we've proven it. And that's what's so exciting is, is we've shown it every day when we work with people. We show it to be true again. And I think that's what's so exciting. So I think with, with numbers, with accounting, things like that, you know, it's funny because people don't say, uh, wow, you're a banker. 
you are so talented. No one says that. Like you said, mm -hmm. they just say, you're really smart. You're really good with numbers. Um, wow, that's really neat. And, and I think for me, talking about what we talked about in our last mm -hmm. show um, with questioning things, this level of curiosity, I think when we call something innate or say that it is just natural, it is, it is a given at birth, that it, it stops us or, or shuts down any potential for curiosity and therefore questioning and therefore growth and therefore mm -hmm. progress which is such a bummer. And so I think with math and those things, I think most people believe that you can teach math, um, which is why we do it in school uh, from a young age, you know, starting in, in pre-K. Why would you teach math if you had to be talented to do it? Well, we just don't think that way about math. We think that we can teach it, and we do. And I think singing is the same thing. I think we can teach it. And so one voice coaches, we do. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think that would be my comparison. I mean, what do you think about that in terms of uh, the difference of people being called talented in different professions and others not? It's kind of like the same thing yeah. where they're like, you sing? You sing, little Bobby? Hey, sing for the family. Sing, yeah. It's holiday time. Sing for the hammer. No one asks little kids <laughs> the accountant to come and show their accounting skills, right? Like, I do think there's yeah. a spectacle that comes with art and artistry, but I think a lot a lot of the word talent being applied to artistry and not accountants again has to do with not knowing how people do it. We know how people add two plus two equals four because after schooling, most people can do that, but we don't know why or how someone can sing a certain note at a certain weight where else someone else can't. And I think that's where the mystery and the talent and the unicorn mindset comes into play a lot. But having you talk about the banker, and I do think there are differences there, but I think smart is their equivalent of talent. Saying like, oh, you're so smart. Same thing. Yes. Absolutely. Totally limiting. Yeah. You know, I, I have to add this because I, I think it's, it's so interesting to me that generally smart and even talented people, quote unquote, don't think of themselves that way. It's really, I, I, in mm. most cases, unless they've been told that, and they're like, well, the reason I can do this is because I am talented. I am special. It's not because they think that they just know that they're going to keep trying to figure something out. And so someone who's smart tends to be someone who doesn't give up, tends to be someone who digs their, their feet into something. Uh, anyone past like high school, right? Like if you're, if you're considered smart in the world, mm -hmm. more than likely you've done a lot of stuff to make things make sense. Uh, you've worked really hard at doing something like that. And generally, people who are just kind of written off in that way, like, oh, you were just lucky and had the zipper, right? Oh, you just like, you're smart. I'm not. I can't do that. Those people get really frustrated uh, because like, well, I didn't, I, I wasn't just, I didn't just get lucky with this. I worked very hard for this. I mean, if maybe I, I had something that made things a little bit easier for me, I worked very hard to get where I am now. Mm -hmm. And this is something I hear from a lot of people. And of course, of, of course, everyone else is like, well, boo-hoo for that person, you know? <laughs> You had to work hard. You, could, you had no breaks in your voice. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Tough life for you. Totally. Um, but regardless, it's valid, right? Their, their feelings are valid about um, uh, believing that they can do more than they think they can. Wow, that's so interesting. Can you talk more about nature versus nurture? Nature being what we're born with, of course, and nurture being what we learn or choose along the way, knowingly or unknowingly, and what parts of singing fall into each category? First, I'm going to talk about speech. When you hear people talk about this in auditions or casting directors or uh, producers or for films or whatever, they say, you know, I just want to hear your authentic voice, just your authentic sound, the real you. In <laughs> singing, what is the real you? In sound making, what is the real you? The real you is just the sounds that come out of your mouth. If you had never met me before, and today was the first time you met me, Alex, and I, I spoke to you like this, you, you would think nothing different. This is just how I talk, you know? Or if I like spoke with you like this, this, this is just how I would talk. Or if I spoke to you like this, this is just how I talk, you know? And that's just what it is, right? Because this is how I was born. You know, this is my natural authentic <laughs> voice, right? These are just all sounds that I'm making. And I, I firmly believe that what we, what our voices build up to by the time we're in our prepubescent stages into adolescence, all those things are an amalgamation or a summary of all of the observances or lack thereof 
of the things that we experience in our world. And so our speech, our speaking voice, um, becomes another product of all the things that we experience in the world. You know, uh, growing up, I, this is amazing. This is amazing. My uncle, uh, my father passed away when I was very young. Uh, I think when I was five, my, my father passed away. And so I didn't really like hear my father's voice that much. Uh, so I grew up mostly without my biological father. I, I rarely got to see my uncle uh, because of his work. And so this is like back, uh, this is a while ago when I was 21. I see my uncle and we're hanging out and we end up laughing at the same time. My laugh and my uncle's laugh are identical. Identical. Whoa. Never would see my uncle. So like speaking to like some kind of genetic like predisposition for making sound and laugh, whatever. Very interesting. I used to lose my voice all the time. I would have vocal damage. I would have all these things that would happen all the time to me, right? Well, learning some of these things in, in my journey of voice, uh, trying to break all these things apart and understand them, what I started to do with my voice is I started to change the sounds I made. I started to change how I produce sound. In changing how I produce sound, all those external tensions and all these weird things that I used to do, I stopped doing. And so now, when I laugh, I sound nothing like my uncle. I even asked my uncle, I said, do I sound at all like my father, like my biological father? Because I, I apparently look very much like my biological father. They're like, no, not at all. Had I, taught, had I asked them that question back then, I think they probably would have said yes. Wow. Um, so, you know, what's interesting about this is we can change how we sound if we want to sound differently. So finding this idea of authentic sound or what is your true self sound, uh, it's all made up. All the things that we do, it's all a combination of observation, trial, error, etc. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah, go ahead. I have to say something. Do you remember uh, when you first got to Texas State and we were working together, I used to talk totally differently. <laughs> do you yeah. remember this? That's I would talk doesn't... like in a really like lightweight and like really quiet and I talk like yes. and I remember having a lesson with you and you were like look <laughs> you can do this forever but it might behoove you to talk slightly differently it might make certain sounds when you're singing easier and ever wow. since then I worked on increasing my weight neutralize my vocal tract a little bit and increasing my volume um and I literally wow. speak differently today my authentic sound is something I worked on because of uh, an idea you put in my mind. Yeah, okay, so then this takes us right into singing. So like, you know, like we were talking about singing, what it really comes down to is, is different styles, you know, different styles um, in the world of one voice. You know, as we talk about all the time, we talk about a, a principle or concept that is called shaping versus creating. And the creation of the sound is how I create the sound. And then everything else beyond that is what we consider shaping, shaping that sound. Um, and understanding how you shape that sound differently can, of course, change everything. It can change the sound. You know, we've talked about this in master classes all the time where we give the example of, like, LeFou. It's like, um, come on, Gaston. You know, and then we have a, ah, oh, LeFou, what are you doing? It sounds so vastly different when in reality the pitches are the same. They're the same. What are you doing, LeFou? I don't know, Gaston. Da 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 da. I mean, they're just the same. And it's so mind blowing when you hear it because. The sound is shaped so differently and sounds so very different. I used to hear this all the time. This is great. People used to say, um, you know, really your voice, uh, I think what your, your, your natural voice is, is an operatic voice. Or I think what your natural tone is, is for pop. Or natural tone is for musical theater, right? And like, again, we have to go back to the idea of, of the natural uh, tone, right? So if we wipe that off the slate, then there's no natural. And then it becomes a game of when I sing, what, what sounds do I make? How do I shape that sound? And I think some people who learn classically, when they're trained classically, one of the things they do is they will immediately go for a larger shape, more of the Gaston shape. They'll sing something like, um, if ever I would leave you, they'll, they'll immediately make the shape much larger. But like right off the bat, and that is their authentic or true sound, quote unquote. And they go, if ever I would leave you, it wouldn't be in summer. And that's like, wait, what just happened? Because you were just talking to me like this. What just changed, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's so fun. You know, with, with singing, we can change our sound and be chameleons. And, and that's one really fun thing that we have the ability to do. It's just something I, I feel is so exciting. And when we release this idea of talent off of, uh, I, I should say when we release the burden of talent 
off of our singing. We suddenly open up our world to a slew of possibilities in sound making, uh, production, as well as sound shaping. We can do virtually any style uh, or sound, which is just so fun. Is there anything, any part of singing other than the actual physiology and ability to create sound that you think is nature instead of nurture? I mean, at the core, this is just my belief. I'm, I know people disagree with me. For me, no. For me, it is, it is all, it is all nurture, cool. and even neglect of nurture. Um, Absolutely. Meaning, yeah. like growing up, some kids happen to recognize some things and others don't, and then that same kid might recognize something else that the other kid didn't. It didn't mean that they were. At a greater disposition to receive that thing, they just ended up. They happened to see something in a particular way that another kid did not. I could have sworn to you, up and down, that I that that the music that I listened to did not have vibrato, did not, no vibrato. Boys to Men, Freddie Mercury, Stevie Wonder, none of them use vibratos. What I would have told you, because I didn't I didn't start learning how to do vibrato until I was 17 years old. And I just sang straight tones because that's just what I did, right? And I remember that so vividly because as I started trying to make sense of why I didn't vibrato before, I realized, oh, well, what had happened is I just didn't hear, you know, I, the music I listened to, no one had vibrato. So how was I going to vibrato? Well, if you mm -hmm. listen, if any of you know Boys the Men or Freddie Mercury or Stevie Wonder, and you listen to them for five seconds, you know very quickly that they have vibrato. I just never heard it. I, it was just like, as if there was like the color blue and I just, I just never recognized it. It's been there the whole time. The color has been there this whole time. I just always looked at it and thought that it was maybe red, or just a, a darker version of red, you know? And so I just never saw blue, but it was always there. And I think that's interesting. So that's what I talk, that's what I mean when I, or I'm referring to when I say, uh, nurture by neglect. For me, I had straight tone and my voice was more pop, lent itself more towards pop sound simply because I couldn't vibrato. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it doesn't mean that I was a pop singer. I want to add something to this, if I may. I, I, I would like to suggest or offer to everyone listening a different definition for talent. That what if instead of talent being something that were innate at birth, what if instead talent were a summation of skills at a current moment? Mm. That if right now I look at you and I say, wow, you are, a, you are a highly skilled dancer. You're highly skilled. I'll call you talented. Now you could just say you're highly skilled uh, to get rid of all the weirdness that, that that word carries on with it right now. But when I think of that, I think that most people without knowing it are actually summarizing a set of skills that they see in front of them and then grading them by saying that is talented, highly talented, very talented, not much talent. Um, and I think all they're doing is just summarizing what they see in front of them. They don't know how you grow up. They have no idea. A casting director, a producer, like they don't know. You know, they're looking at you right now, right? And so if you right. sing, you grow up and you're trained in, in, you've trained classically in terms of style, well, then you're probably going to be pretty good at singing classical style, right? Um, and then someone's like, can you sing a, a pop riff for me? And you're like, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> like, weird. It no longer works. You're so untalented, or let's remove that word rather and say skilled. Your skill level is low at that particular skill set. What other words do you use instead of talented, Michael, like in your own life when you hear like an awesome singer? I use skilled. Uh, I use, man, they're really skilled. Gosh, they're really good at that. Wow, like I'm impressed at how well they, <laughs> I get a little nerdy sometimes. Like I'm really impressed with how they uh, were able to maneuver their weight. I think this totally. is part of, like, yeah, it's like so nerdy. I, I have this, and you know this, Alex, I have this, this, I wouldn't say obsession, but I, I have this like total, oh, this thing that eats away inside of me to have the appropriate words for the appropriate thing. Yeah. I, it, yeah, you know. You do. <laughs> um, um, it just, it, it's something about ensuring that I'm not, that I'm appropriately labeling something because that's what our language is, is just labeling what's in front of us. And so I want to try and get as close as I can to the appropriate label for it. And when I say talent, it, it, it just is like a wash for me. Yeah. It's just like, uh, it's talented. Well, what is, what does that even mean? Like, what are they good at that? that why would I call them that? 
Why would I call them talented? What do they do? Were they, were they good at singing loud? Could they change their volumes efficiently? Do they have vibrato and could do riffing well? Um, like, what does that mean? You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, this kind of rolls back a little bit to what we were talking about last week is continuing that curiosity. But yeah, so I think oh, these are words that I use all the time. Skill, good, um, highly skilled. So I completely agree with you as far as the nature versus nurture aspect. Yeah. Uh, I think everything we do is learned. Almost, almost everything, like beyond singing. And then I hear Freddie Mercury sing, and immediately my mind is like, you were born to sing. <laughs> yeah, right. My mind says that. It's against everything I actually believe, but my yeah. mind goes to, you were put on this planet to create the sounds you were creating. Yeah. Do you ever have those moments or those people yeah. that you're like, you are born? And then yeah. it like contradicts this idea of nature versus yeah. nurture? Totally. I think the way I, I think the way my brain ultimately um, clarifies it is kind of what I was talking about before with, you know, some kids pick up some things and some don't. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, I have those moments, right. Where like you see it and you're like, God, what? Like what? I mean, how yeah. I wish, I wish I had, I wish I had grown up with that. Like if I could have, if I could have started where you're starting now, like oh my what would that have meant? I mean, so many of you watching, everyone watching, like I'm sure you see, things that you've learned now in life and you're like wow if i could have figured this out 10 years ago where would i be now people say that to us all the time they're like what would have happened if i was studying mm -hmm. one voice when i was 13 what if we had kids studying one voice when they were five you know like what would happen and i think that's i think that's what's so interesting is i think about like people like freddie mercury and people that i hear all the time you know auditions and things like that where God, they sing and you're just like, wow, like there are so many skill sets currently that you are doing proficiently that no one has had to train you on. That mm -hmm. is amazing. And for me, those are the things that that kid just happened to see. They happened to pick up on them. They can't articulate them to you because they don't, they don't, they've never had to and no one else has been able to. They just say, well, you're really talented. So like, mom's well, really talented. Uh, I just can do this because I'm talented. This is what talented voices do. Well, it's, it's not. It's what someone who, who has a lot of skill can do. And you happen to have a lot of that skill um, when you do that, whoever person you are. Uh, so when I hear those people, I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, why, what kind of blows my mind now is I hear them and I'm blown away. And then my mind gets even more blown away because I think to myself, how did they make it through all of the trials and tribulations that life brings them? and not not miscalculate or 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 misinterpret yeah. the information that they received from someone how how did they make it cuz i sure didn't yeah most people don't <laughs> yeah that blows so, my mind I, yeah. yeah and even that though even like how did you make it through all the nurture that should have let you not allowed you to be as proficient as you are in all these skills like, even that to me is like I don't know. I'm like, is there like a magic fairy? Like just when it comes to like Freddie Mercury, that's like it. It's like those like crazy people. Insane. It really is. But at the same time, we can listen to him and we can break down exactly what he's doing. Yeah. Um, now totally we can. speaking. Now, now I'm, yes. I'm going to add to that because I think you bring up a really great itchy question about that. I had a, I had a friend uh, when I was running, I used to run competitively when I was younger. And I had this friend who was just, he was so... He was amazing. And when I say run competitively, for those of you who don't know, I competed in the Junior Olympics. So for some of you who like, did that, that's awesome. But I competed in the Junior Olympics five times. I was intense. I was an intense. I did not know that. What? what? I did not know that about you. I was a very intense track and field athlete. I did long jump, high jump. I think at one point I was like ninth or tenth in the nation or something like that at high jump. It was, it was amazing. So I was like, I was hardcore at my training. And one of the things that I did on my on my team is we had this one guy who, God, he was, he was so fast, this guy. Like, he would sit around all day, like, and then, and then he runs with us. And this kid could just, like, he was on fire. He was insane. And the rest of us were, like, training really hard, right? And this is the first time I really learned about what real work could do for a body. It was pretty amazing. And this kid would just show up and just run. Oh, my God gosh, like he could already run faster than everyone there without training at all. And here was the best part. He didn't care. He didn't want to do it. 
He didn't care about running. In fact, he gave it up that summer. He was like, oh, and, he's not, and everyone's like, no, what are you doing? You're so fast. You're so talented, right? Um, you made it, right? And so I'll, I'll also say, this, I want to add this for everyone else out there too. Some of you like may do things in your lives that like, yeah, sure. Like you may just see it. It may just make sense to you. You know, like some people for singing, it just kind of makes sense. There's things that they do that just make sense to do them. We've developed all kinds of things like vocal setting and, all these tools to help people break down what some other people just do. Mm. Uh, they just do it. Like, of course, I'm going to think about how quiet I'm going to get at the end of this phrase. Of course, I'm going to think about changing. Of course, I'm going to do that, right? You don't articulate that because you don't even know that's what you're doing. You're just doing it, you know? But for the rest mm. of us, we had to figure out how to do that. And uh, it's just such an interesting thing with this level of talent that I was running with when I was younger. Uh, there was people who just, things made sense to their bodies the way they did. People look at me and say that about jumping. How do you do that? How do, how do you, how is it that you do, you know, and, and uh, I was one of those talented kids who could just jump really far or jump really high. And the more I, I, I started looking at what I was doing, I started learning, oh, wow, wait, there's a reason I do this. There's a reason my, I can make my body do this. And I would watch people jump and they would jump like an inch off the ground. I said, what's wrong with you? Like, I just <laughs> didn't understand why they couldn't jump like I could, you know? And I didn't, it just didn't make any sense to me. And so I remember that was kind of this beginning itch for me of like, ah, there's something that there's something that I'm doing that's different than you. And, and I, and I can't see it. I can't see it on the outside. And I don't know what it is that I'm doing this differently. It just feels like there's something I'm doing that you're not doing. You were saying a while back when we were talking about Freddie Mercury, what if I had figured that out? Like, oh my gosh, if I figured that out back then, blah, blah, blah. But it made me think if you had figured if you had it all figured out the way Freddie Mercury did, <laughs> we wouldn't be sitting here. We wouldn't have one voice it's because true. there would be no reason because there would be no questions. Yeah. I would have just gone on with my life and very happy to just be talented. I would have been very happy. Yeah. Just, You'd have been like, I can sing anything I want. Great. You can? not That's weird. You should just try harder. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. I, I have to add one more story to this because I yeah. think it's so good. I, had to, I was working with this guy um, and he said... <laughs> This is amazing. <laughs> he said, uh, as I was, you know, trying to, to get higher, I, I just thought, you know, I should try singing higher. And so I did. And I could sing higher. You know, that's what I tell people all the time is if you want to sing higher, just start singing higher. Right. And I was like, <laughs> I just started laughing. I said, that is lovely that you think that. Unfortunately, that's not the actual experience that most people will have. You had it. Because this person was also a person who just happened to get through. Like they happened to skate by yeah. the issues that a lot of us don't skate by on, you know? Like I mm -hmm. stayed in chest coordination and forced the life out of it as high as I could go before even maybe ripping my throat in half. I, as far as I could take it, I would do that. This guy, nope, would move straight from chest into middle. So of course, all he had to do was just use his voice more and it got stronger, <laughs> right? Not me, no. Uh, and so it's just such a, it's such a fascinating way when you have someone like me who struggled so much with that and then you had someone like him and you'd hear both of us probably say, no, you can work really hard and that get better. And this person said, just sing more and you mm. will get better. Right. And it's just a completely different, it's a completely different viewpoint of it because of their experience. Right. I think let's end it there. Michael, thank you so much. This was so interesting. Thanks for thank sharing you. your time and thoughts. Um, next week I'm joined again by Michael Maresca creator of One Voice. And it's our last show for Changing Our Vocal Perspective, which I'm kind of bummed because I loved it so it's much. It's been so lovely. It's yeah. been so nerdy. And yeah, it it's just been great to share our nerdiness with Instagram uh, and all our community. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you guys so much. So next week, we'll be talking about what is One Voice. We're going to talk about the summation of everything. Uh, how do we define one voice, which is a question we get a lot. Wednesdays at 1.30 p.m. CT. And don't forget to submit your questions to questions.singonevoice.com. We'll see you guys next week. And thanks again, Michael. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.